I'm back, Dr. DePass, Starfish. Page 203, DUI of anger. The drive home is pleasant, pleasant like stepping on a Texas fire ant mound. First comes a lot of fast biting and stinging. You embarrass me to death. The tires squeal as mom floors it out of the parking lot, parking garage. Yes, it's all about you, I say as she merges onto the freeway and weaves in and out of traffic. She's a maniac driving under the influence of anger. You completely overreacted. She cuts off other drivers and has honking contests. What I did was an underreaction after learning that my mother planned for me to have possibly life-ending surgery. Don't be so dramatic. It's an option. That's all I'm saying. Aunt Zoe almost died from that same surgery. She was bigger than you, more out of shape than you. So you hate looking at me so much you're willing to chant me dying on an operation table or later from complications? Mom looks at me instead of the road. I've never said I hate looking at you. Dark, bust, I scream and point, she swerves. You're out of control with your eating with that little episode back there. And you're a control freak, inventorying food, refusing to buy me clothes, trying to bribe me. Or are we only allowed to talk about my flaws? Fire ants, bites, leaves, swollen red spots that turn into blisters, making the pain last longer, not unlike what we say to each other. Mom turns onto our driveway and jerks us both forward and again as she parks. <coughs> she throws up her hands in the air. I'm trying to help. Yeah, by so-called fixing me. Well, guess what? I'm not broken. And if I am, it's because of you, not my weight. I slam the SUV door and stomp into the house. Not my first rodeo. Whoa, Dad says, using his firm rodeo voice as if I'm a horse out of control when I slam the front door. What you all bowed up about? As if you don't know, I pound up the stairs. Mom slams the front door. Get back down here, Ileana Elizabeth. She's ready for another go around. Bring it on. You do daze me, Dad. You said you would you said you never would, and you did. What in the tarnation are you talking about? He says. He looks at me, then mom. Somebody better tell me what's going on here. Mom's motionless, quiet. Then it hits me like a big whiff of fresh bull crap in the arena. Dad doesn't know. She's gone behind both of our backs. This ought to be good. How'd you see all of this playing out, Mom? Dad leaves for work one day. You sneak me to the hospital. I have weight loss surgery and we're home by dinner. Dad jerks his head towards Mom, who's staring at the floor. One thing Zadie taught me was if a person can't look you in the eye, you've got problems, Dad says. Big problems. Mom folds her arms across her chest and heads towards Dad's office, her heels clicking. He follows her, then stops and looks up at me, still frozen on the stairs. I'm so sorry, Ellie. Truly I am. He slams his office door. And their biggest fight ever begins. Waves of emotion. What's up? Doc leans in, rests her elbows on her knees and her chin in her hands. Mom took me to the doctor. I a bi biatric surgeon. I tell Doc everything. You're definitely a storyteller. You described it perfectly, but you're also a poet. So tell me how it made you feel. I shake my head. Facing feelings is like swimming in the stormy ocean. One wave of emotion hits, then another and another until I feel like I'm drowning. That's why you're going to learn how to face each feeling as it comes. So you just face one wave, one wave at a time, not an ocean. Which way first? Well, you're a writer, so let's start with a bunch of words. Name all the feelings you have, then you can choose. Doc throws open her arms, toss them out. No particular order. I start slowly. I think about the surgery, being cut open, scared. I think about mom making me look in the mirror, ugly. Then the words come rapid fire, ashamed, embarrassed, mad, Good, Doc takes notes, 
Let's dive deeper with one of those. Give me a synonyms for mad. I clench my jaw. Furious. I raise my voice. Livid. I almost spit each syllable. Seething. I spring up off the couch. Doc rolls back in back her chair. Gives me space to pace from one side of the room to the other. Like doing laps in a pool. Supposed to. My arms flail like I'm swimming on land, a fish out of water, to drag me in there like I'm a freak of nature and want him to cut me, slice me open, rearrange and reteach organs. Just because of this, I grab my stomach, shake it. It's not what a mom should do. I collapse onto the couch, hug the pillow to my chest, hiding my heart, not my stomach. Mom shouldn't do that. Tears flow as I rock back and forth. She's supposed to love me, my voice is a whisper. Just love me. When I stop crying, the pillow's wet. I think I owe you a new one. Don't worry, I'll bill it to your mom, dog winks. You've come a long way. So, no more sessions? I act like an excited puppy. But you'd miss me, Doc says. Actually, I would, I admit. I like coming here. You've really helped me. I've learned a lot. It's important you learn that not all doctors are like the ones your mom's taking you to. Try to find a doctor you like. I'll explain to your parents why it should be your choice. They shouldn't have any say-so. Mom, with no say-so, it's about time. Strike one, two, three. Dad and I create lists, create a list of the top 10 doctors to try. At the first appointment, the nurse tisks when she weighs me. I turn around and leave. At the second appointment, with each pump of the black bowl, the blood pressure cuff constricts my arm like a hungry boa until I think my skin will burst open and my arm starts to bruise. When I winch, the nurse says, blame your big arm. I scoot off the table and leave. Dad calls her more prickly than a West Texas cactus. With the third appointment, the doctor just stares at my stomach. An octopus could be wrapped around my face and he wouldn't see it. I almost moon him to see if he'll notice that, but my butt deserves better. I slam the door as I leave. Forgiven. When we get to dad's pickup after the third appointment, he doesn't start the engine. He cries. I stare out the window as if the orange wavy W of the Whataburger sign nearby hypnotizes me. I can't look at dad when he's crying. It'll make me cry. I'm so sorry, Ellie. I wish I'd known your mom was par parading you around town to doctor after doctor and letting them treat you like this. I didn't want to cause yet another fight by telling you if you didn't know. Forgive me. I forgive dad, but it's my mom who needs to say I'm sorry. One size does not fit all. Doctors are like clothes. One size does not fit all. Not even close. So I try on yet another one. Regular and oversized cheers fill the waiting room so everyone can be comfortable. Want to know the number? The nurse asks as she weighs me. I have a choice. Power. Rights. Finally, I shake my head. Oh, shake my head. Okay, then step on backward. Dad makes lame jokes, trying to ease the tension as we wait in the exam room. After a gentle knock on the door, it opens. Hi, you must be Ellie. She looks at me in the eyes, doesn't stare at my stomach. So far, so good. Speak up, buttercup. As they say, everything's bigger in Texas. Six, four, and the weather up here's just fine, she says, answering the questions. I'm not about, I'm not asking out loud. I'm Dr. Vasquez, but most folks call me Dr. V. She isn't skinny, but she isn't obese. What brings you here today, Ellie? She sits down on the stool. I swing my feet, dangling over the table, and search for the right words. Speak up, buttercup, or I can't help you. I'm trying to find a doctor, one who won't say, looked in the mirror lately, or at least your parents won't have to worry about boys asking you out in a few years. And if you mention biatric surgery, I'm leaving. I don't mean to, but I cry. Dr. V hands me a tissue. If all that's happened to me, I'd cry too. She talks all during the exam, 
Let me just tell you, I have sick patients of all sizes. I have healthy patients of all sizes. I'm not small, but I take care of my body. I get a checkup every six months. I try to eat as healthy as I can. Mine is chocolate because hello, what's life without chocolate? And okay, steak off the grill because hello, Texas. I don't go to the gym, but I contra dance, which is well, look it up when you get home. She apologizes for the other doctors, applauds me for my daily swims, and treats me like a person, not a problem. I make an appointment for a six month checkup with Dr. V because hello, I like her. A nice moment with mom. Got a minute, mom asks a while, standing in my bedroom doorway. She walks in before I can even say yes. What now? My body tenses up, but I scoot my school books over so she can sit on my bed. Gigi's not about to budge, though. This is her room as much as it is mine. Dad tells me you found a doctor you like. Yeah, I hang my head down so my hair drapes around my face, a curtain to hide behind. It's easier to say what you think when you don't have to look at someone. I hated you dragging me to all those doctors. Mom takes a deep breath and exhales it as a sigh. I shouldn't have done that. It was a bad idea. Really bad, I add. So how are the appointments with the therapist going? Do you think she's helping? I nod. Mom reaches over, brushes the hair away from my face, gently cups my chin in one hand and lifts it so we see eye to eye. I just want you to be okay. That's all I've ever wanted. I thought all you ever wanted was for me to lose weight. I think. I won't say it and run the chance of ruining the moment. This is the kindest mom has been since, well, I can't remember when. And it's weird, but nice. And that is page 218. We will stop there. I'll be back with On the Run.